Now, in order to use that Newton law cooling equation, that equation, the most important part that you need to find is heat transfer coefficient. Okay? So heat transfer coefficient itself, sometimes it is listed or printed in the handbook, but normally it will not be printed in terms of H itself. It is normally represented in terms of dimensionless number because H itself has units and units is associated to size of the equipment. So we do not know in advance what kind of sizing we are playing with. So normally people who prepare this kind of information prepare information in terms of dimensionless number. Okay? That dimensionless number associated with heat transfer coefficient is called NU or Nassau number. Nassau number here is defined based on heat transfer coefficient time diameter ta divided by um, conductivity. Okay, the K here is uh, thermal conductivity as a unit of watt per meter Kelvin. Okay, so normally when you search the, the handout or handbook, you find equation representing Nusselt number and you should know that Nusselt number would lead you to heat transfer coefficient. Nassau number will be represented based on different scenario, like flowing in circular pipe, flowing in uh, rectangular ducts, and so on. The list of Nassau number formula are given in your textbook as well. If you look into chapter 14, there will be a table listing different kinds of Nassau numbers. All right. D here is characteristic length of your system, of the particular system. K is thermal conductivity of the fluid. Okay? And Nassau number can be derived based on specific problems. For example, if you recall our system here, From chapter 11, if you have a vertical pipe that having fluid flowing downward according to gravity and you supply energy or supply heat to the system constantly, that means you have constant flux of heat along the way, okay? During the time when you solve the problem here, we stop at differential equation and they ask you only for the boundary conditions. If you go on and solve that dif partial differential equation, you will get this solution, okay?
All right? These equations are obtained by integrating partial differential equation that you got from chapter 11 or chapter 10. Okay? And I can say it is not simple. To get this one is a little bit painful, actually. Now, from here, the theta represent temperature at different position. Of course, temperature here is function of both R and Z. Okay? A here is function of Z, B is function of R. So therefore, temperature is function of R and Z. If you calculate wall temperature, From this equation, at wall temperature, it means we look at R equal to capital R, okay? If R equal to capital R, it means we look for B equal to 1. B is just another dimensionless number. Plug it back into the, the original equation, you get theta equal to 4A plus 1, minus 1 fourth, minus 7 24th. Or it is equal to 4A plus 11 over 24. This is wall temperature. If you put definition of theta in here. You get T minus T1. T1 is inlet temperature of the fluid. So you have fluid coming down at temperature T1. So as long as you take B to be 1, it means that you look at the wall only. And according to our convention, T at the wall is called T0. So this is T0. You can bring T1 to this side, you get T0 as a function of Z. Okay. So from this equation, you should notice that in this case, we keep the flux to be constant. That means amount of heat transfer at different positions is supposed to be the same. But inside the pipe, the fluid is heating up. So in order to keep heat transfer to be the same, temperature of the wall is supposed to be changed with respect to length, right? So you can see that temperature of the wall it's changing with respect to length because A is function of Z. It's not function of R anymore. Then we can calculate bulk temperature. You have wall temperature, you have fluid, average fluid temperature calculated. If you take the difference between wall temperature T0 and TB. That will be driving force that you can plug into the Newton law cooling. Right? So if I take T0 subtracted by TB, it is that part subtracted by this part. Okay, so T1 here and T1 there cancel out. The rest should have the common term to be Q0R over K. 
So you will have 11 over 24 Q0R over K or equal to 11 over 48 Q0 diameter over K. So if you change, rearrange the equation, you get Q0.